Everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin. I'm joined by my carbon copy, Rich Stambolian. We're the same boy. Are we the same boy? Same boy. Uh, you know where uh, you could find me? You could find me at the Big Bad Boy Store. You are at the Big Bad Boy Store. <laughs> uh, what's going on, Rich? Saturday edition, extended uh -huh. edition. Did Vicky pop at that joke? That, that's actually my wife's joke. Is that really? Yeah, because I get my action figures from the Big Bad Toy Store. And, Do you really? Uh, yeah, it's called Big Bad Toy Store. It really is, and it's it's. I'm not promoting them. They're not. They have nothing to do with with this show. But it's called Big Bad Big Bad Toy Store. And the other day, Vicky was like, "Oh, you got something new from the Big Bad Boy Store?" I got to take this Christmas logo laugh. off. There we go. Now we're back to normal. There we go. Are we back to normal? Yeah, we're back to normal, guys. Hey, Joel Pearl in the chat room. Uh, a lot going on. A lot of pro wrestling to talk about. Man, uh, what a way to start the, the year. And I hope this trend continues. And this is kind of like a sign of things to come in pro wrestling for 2022. Because we've had a fantastic week all across the board of really cool wrestling shows. Uh, started off with WWE Day 1. Uh, ending with uh, with Battle of the Belts tonight for the actually Battle of the Belts and Impact has a pay per view. Hard to kill, right? Oh, that's right. And you know, it's funny when I see Battle of the Belts, I think of the first show I ever played uh, locally with a band. I was 19 years old, maybe 18, and it was called the Battle of the Babes. Okay, that is forever stuck in my head. I, when my I joke hear, was when I hear be, Battle of the Belts, huh? My, I, I had no idea that you were going to go with a Battle of the Babes, and I was going to be like, it was the Battle of the Babes competition you were in. I was literally I about to say that. We we played our set, and then they did like a weird wet, wet T-shirt contest, and yeah. it was right on uh, Metropolitan Avenue. Yeah, very cool. All right, uh, well, how do you want to begin this, Rich? Um, do you want to do the day one fallout and quickly go through the raw results? Because there's some kind of interesting stuff here. Yeah, let's do that. Go into it. All right. So uh, Roman tested positive for COVID the day of the show, which was last Saturday. Stupid baby. <laughs> oh, no. I threw it. I threw that baby. Um, I thought, it's, let, me, let me ask you this. Sure. Because the whole, the whole Roman, uh, the, that main event changing, I don't think anybody expected they were going to go in this direction, which is always a positive. No. I like it when they do this. And for all the the criticism you could give to WWE when they are pushed against that wall when they're pinned against that wall mm. when babies put in that corner they do fantastic oh, yeah. they do great when you're like oh they're they gonna really screw do. this up they do fantastic so maybe maybe it's like everybody dropping the bar you know a little bit and then and then it, it working out but Roman Reigns has a positive they announced it that afternoon um pay-per-views are no longer pay-per-views rich no, they are now being referred to as premium live events. Are you going to say PLEs? You going to say PLEs from now on? PLEs. You know, somebody wrote that to me, not about WWE. It was a, it was a different live streaming thing. They were asking me to uh, come on as a consultant, and they oh, use cool. PLE. And I'm like, what the F is a PLE? This is like months ago. I'm like, what the hell is a PLE? I kept reading it. I'm like, PLE, PLE, PLE. And I thought, I thought it was like a league. Like, Interesting. Yeah, I was like, oh, something league event i like i didn't i didn't put it together uh, but that's the term now inside term uh amongst media P, uh ple's premium live events which kind of makes sense but they're all pay-per-views because you're paying to view it right in some form or fashion this is a ple we're doing a ple right now you are yeah we are doing this a PLE. is this is a premium live event we are we're, i'm a premium live event so are you you're a pre andrew zarian is a premium live event whenever you see him in person <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Drew legit got hurt. Uh, he has a neck injury and he was written off TV with an injury uh, per Fightful. So he's hurt. And that kind of changes uh, the plans moving forward because I believe he was going to be in the mix with Roman. That's how they were going to do this. Johnny Knoxville declares for the Royal Rumble. Rich Holland uh, broke his nose by ricochet by doing a shooting star press. Brock was added to the main event for the WWE title match. And he won by penning Big E clean. Crazy. Mm-hmm. RK Bro with Migos, the Migos, defeated the Street Profits. I want to know what they paid Migos. Because, you know, I had, I had booked $25, them. $25,000. Did so you really? I had booked them for, for the club. You know? So, And I know mm -hmm. what I paid. Do you think this is one of those situations where it's like, I'm such a fan, you don't have to pay me? 
No, 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 no. They paid him a lot of money. Interesting. They paid him a lot of money for this. Which is you also I mean, glossed over. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. You go. Let's say you also glossed over the Knoxville thing. Were you a jackass fan at all? No. Hated jackass. I hate that really? kind of humor. Never did it for me. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. It makes me very uncomfortable. Because you don't want, you're, you're terrified of getting your nuts hit. I, I just don't like it. It just makes me very, very uncomfortable. Like, uh, I don't a, like, 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 uh, like hurting humor. Uh, interesting. Interesting. I never Didn't knew that about me. you. Yeah. Made me oh, very, man. very uncomfortable. Jackass 2 is a masterpiece, bro. You should it, watch it. Listen, I've seen it. I've seen all the Jack. I, I used to watch it. Like, it was when it was on MTV, like, in the late 90s, 2000s. Like, everybody had it on. But it just never, I never really liked it. The whole Steve-O thing, I don't get. You don't get Steve-O? Don't get him. Oh, Steve was great, man. Yeah. Don't get it. <laughs> don't get it. I know. I, well, dude, I, and I'm shocked you like it. Really? I'm really surprised by this. Yeah. Dude, I love Steve. I love all those dudes, except for except for Bam. And you don't care for Bam or Giro. I don't care for Bam. I don't care for Bam. I do love Knoxville and Steve-O and Pontius and Tremaine. Nothing. And Weeman. There's nothing Yo, for Wee Man. Man's awesome. There's uh, nothing. <laughs> This is this the line? Is this the line we're drawing now? This is the line it's we're drawing. Jackass fans or non jackass fans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, guys, um, if you're going to super chat us, we are going to answer those at the end of the show and get to them at the end of the show. Yes. Please don't feel like you're being ignored. But with the current format that we're doing, any super chats are going to be addressed at the end. Yes. Uh, where were we? Becky Lynch defeated Liv Morgan mm. to retain the title. It was a, uh, the finish was wacky because she was supposed to put her foot on the ropes and miss the ropes. And the commentary had to save that by saying like, oh, she didn't even need to cheat. She was trying to cheat, but she didn't even need to cheat because she got the pin. Usos defeated the New Day to retain the tag team championship for the 800th time. We also saw it happen last night. Uh, Edge defeated the Maze. Beth Phoenix came out to chase Maurice and it was a timing cue issue where she just screaming, mm -hmm. uh, waiting for her theme to kick in. <laughs> well, so she can walk down the ramp. Uh, Raw, let's begin with this. Monday Night Raw. Uh, Paul Heyman came out with Brock Lesnar who tells the crowd to acknowledge him. Heyman put over the other four guys big, especially Big E. Uh, good job in that segment. And uh, this is now we're getting this bizarre thing. So, Here's how there was a lot of speculation that Biggie was going to win the match. I believe Biggie at one point was probably going to win the match, mm -hmm. but it was changed to Seth Rollins. And that kind of makes sense because that was the original singles match. They weren't going to have this five on five match. They were going to have a singles match. Right. And poor Seth got pushed out of this. All right. Uh, but we ended up with that five on five. I, I think the big show in here was Bobby Lashley. That was the story of that match. Oh, yeah. Uh, so. Let's see. Uh, Raw, we're, we'll do this very quickly. Yes, please. Uh, so Because we have a lot of other stuff to get to and a lot of new stuff. Uh, Paul Heyman came out with Brock, tells the crowd to acknowledge him. Heyman put over everybody in the match. Uh, also took shots at Roman for getting COVID. Uh, that was cool. And we got a match at the end of the show to determine the number one contender to face Brock Lesnar at Royal Rumble. And it was Bobby Lashley, Kevin Owens, Big E, and Seth Rollins. Really good main event. Yeah, And it's going to be Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley for the first time. This has been something that people have been wanting for a very, very long time. I believe when Lashley came back to the company, that was going to be the program that they were thinking about doing. I, I mean, every indicator was going in that direction. And they ended up going with his, like, look at my gluteus maximus gimmick. He would just yeah, strut his weird. ass. Yeah. Just comes out strutting his butt. Uh, so that was, that was strange. Um, where do you want to go from here? Because we got we got raw dead, so do you want to go in order of days? Do you want to do uh, NXT real quick? Yeah, let's do that because that was a big. Okay. Th this was a um, you know a coming of age story for many people on this show. Yeah, and yeah, for sure. We so we saw this happen, and then we saw the releases happen, which we're going to go into. But you know, very interesting stuff here, and the direction mm -hmm. of NXT has totally shifted. The ratings really held up for this. It was their highest rated show since last year's uh, Halloween Havoc. I believe that's fascinating. So basically, basically from judging by that, would you say apart from the fan discontent, they're doing something right? I don't think there was fan discontent. I think there's uh, Twitter vocalized people having discontent. I think, you know, you okay. look at their ratings and they're, they're holding up. People are watching this. 
So whether they're watching because they don't like it, I don't know. Or but they are watching. You know, their ratings huh. are not. You know, with all the people that they lost, right? They lost. Mm. I mean, that entire roster is gone. They're down like one hundred and fifty thousand views. Like even even when they had Adam Cole in there, but they were doing it in the sevens, high sevens, low eights. Okay, they're doing high sixes, maybe a low seven. They're not too far off. Okay. So, North American champion Carmelo Hayes defeated the Cruiserweight champion Roderick Strong to unify the titles. AJ Styles brawled with Grayson Waller, setting up the main event for next week. Matt Riddle and MSK. I don't like this combination, by the way. Why not? I would have much rather had Jeff Hardy with MSK. You know, that would have been really cool. I don't mind riddle with msk because they have the 420 connection going is that what it is yeah i guess so yeah yeah so dude you know what what, what we totally missed out on mm. do you remember when matt when jeff got drafted he cut this promo because he's like you're gonna see a matt hardy you've never seen before like some like talking about <laughs> like he's reinventing himself he said he he said we were gonna see a matt hardy jeff hardy said a we jeff were hardy see a yeah, we're gonna hardy. see, a, matt hardy. We we're gonna see a jeff hardy we're gonna see a jeff hardy um <laughs> And I was like, and you were saying like, oh, maybe we're gonna get Willow. I've been wanting Willow for years, dude. I don't think it's ever gonna happen. Love that movie, by the way. Oh, great movie! I think they're doing. Uh, I think they're doing a prequel to it. To Willow? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's like the story of like Mad Mardigan. Oh, is it really? I think oh, so. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, go so ahead. What else do we have? Matt Matt Riddle and MSK defeated Imperium. Um. NXT champion, NXT ladies champion, Mandy Rose defeated Cora Jade and Raquel Gonzalez in an ODQ triple threat. I think they're going to keep that belt on Mandy for a while. Hold on, my kid is screaming. Oh, let me yell at them. Hold on. All right. All right, maybe I just yelled at them. Maybe that's something you shouldn't say while we're live. <laughs> screaming at them. I'm going to yell at my kids I'm right gonna now, I'm going to yell at dude. my kids. Hang on. Give me a second. I got to yell at my kids. Um... All right, no, no, no. Uh, what else do we have here? So we can move on from NXT. Uh, Von Wagner attacks uh, Chase U and a random fan, which was a plant. Braun Breaker beat Tommaso Ciampa to win the title with using a Frankensteiner, one with the Steiner rec recliner, but he came out and kicked down the last remnants of the black and gold NXT yeah. symbol. Yeah. Uh, his entrance foreshadowed the next day's news. It's very interesting. Like this clearly was planned. You know, I don't think these, these releases probably came as a shock. I'm, again, I'm speculating. The NXT releases probably came as a shock to the fans other than internally internally That's very they probably they probably prepared these guys ahead of time and be like look like out with the old in with the new sorry it's just business you know how it goes and with that being said please go into it so uh wwe made massive cuts at the performance center uh i posted the statement that wwe sent me regarding this and you could kind of read into it a little bit more uh obviously massive cuts to the, they're, they're changing their initiative they're changing it's it's, it's a new guard coming in essentially right so we have yeah. um, William Regal, Road Dog, uh, Timothy Thatcher, Danny Birch, uh, Hideki Suzuki, Kathy Carino, which was train was uh, Allison Danger, which mm -hmm. was she was training them. She was the lead women's trainer. Dave Kapoor, uh, which is uh, Ranjin uh, Singh, Scott Armstrong, George Carroll, Ryan Katz, Chris Guy, which is a steal. Uh, and Samoa Joe again. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, this yeah. release, uh, you know, Regal, Road Dog, Armstrong. You know, th th this this to me really shows that it's a changing up the guard from Triple H's era, Hunter's era. Oh, for sure. Sean's for still sure. there, by the way. But I don't listen. I don't know anything personally. If Hunter's out of NXT, if they're re you know figuring out a new position for him, a new way of developmental. But he is. I mean. He's not running the show here at this very moment. Now, I don't know if he, if he is eventually, but these are major cuts done to people that have historically been in authority positions in the company. And mm. when you do that, that is essentially saying that you, are no, you no longer want to go with their thought process, their philosophy on what the product should be. 
you're bringing in guys that are going to fit the new philosophy. Right. Now, I don't I don't I know I don't know who's going there and I don't know what person's taking what position yet, but you know, William Regal, Road Dog, and Armstrong. Armstrong was a referee trainer. I mean, he's he's one of the best referees. Kathy Carino uh was a lead trainer. Uh very interesting stuff. Very very interesting stuff here, but we're going to see where this goes. I I don't yeah. know this could be a positive. This could be a negative. We got to let it play out. That, that's, yeah, absolutely. That's how I see this. Uh, I would definitely let this play out. Um, you know, I, I Regal put out a very nice message saying, you know, pretty much like there's no bad, there's no animosity, there's no bad feelings. WWE saved his life. Yeah. I know Road Dog feels very positive about them too. Oh, yeah. Uh, dude, now we could, we could finally get a New Age Outlaw reunion in AEW. Well, it's happening. Uh, I think they're doing a signing together like immediately. Oh, excellent. And uh, it's funny, like all these guys are going to land on their feet. You know, of like course, I don't yeah. think I don't think Road Dog can use his name if he goes to AEW. No, <laughs> he, but it'll I, be Brian James. He'll be Brian James. Um, I think for me personally, I think the Samoa Joe thing combined with what's going on with the rest of wrestling. Like, ah, so now that's the interesting yeah. piece, right? Samoa yeah. Joe. What do you think happens? In my fantasy land, Samoa Joe tears through AEW and New Japan and Impact and just destroys everybody. He becomes yeah. the big he becomes the biggest monster in pro wrestling. If you're Tony Khan, you really have to think who you're bringing in now. Because oh, yeah, for sure. I, I, I to me, for me, uh I would definitely have Samoa Joe and Keith Lee in my top 2. Mm -hmm. Over, over, over Bray Wyatt, over Braun, you know, Braun Strowman. Uh, you, you have all these tremendous releases mm -hmm. who are going to be, who are going to be two people that are going to be able to give you what you want. And listen, all these guys are fantastic, right? There's, there's 80 or so wrestlers that are free agents right now, uh, that could yeah. come over, but you know, listen, Samoa Joe is the, is a guy that's beloved. And even by casual WWE fans, I have to tell oh, yeah. you this. Um, it's rare that you get a guy that is so beloved on the independents and so beloved by, old, you know, uh, P1 fans mm -hmm. uh, that it converts over and is beloved by casual viewers. And yeah. he's one of those guys that is beloved by casual viewers way more than Keith Lee. Listen, Keith Lee, we love we love, you know, what he's able to do because we've seen the best of the best of Keith Lee. Oh, for sure. WWE never got to see that. And so we're a little bit biased in our in our viewpoint because we've seen him perform at such a high level. Samoa Joe performed at a very high level in WWE on the main oh, yeah. roster. You know, his match with Brock Lesnar was cool. He had some great, awesome matches. And he's believable. That's the thing. You oh, know, yeah, you look yeah. at this guy and he's believable. So was Keith Lee. Keith Lee's believable. I mean, he's a big teddy bear. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I want to give him a hug. You don't want to give Keith Lee a hug? I want to give him the biggest hug. Biggest hug, man. And it's like gentle. It's not like he doesn't hurt you. It's very gentle. Um, Keith, listen. When I see you, can I give you a hug? Just a nice hug, like like a nice friendly. Like, but I'll rest my head on your shoulder for like a little too long, just a little too long. What would you do if you met Keith Lee and he was like six inches shorter than you? I'd be so upset because I'm not that tall. <laughs> Five nine and a half on a good day. Uh. I'd be so upset. I'm like, dude, what happened? Uh, so here's another interesting story, Walter. Has wrestled his last match in NXT UK. I know that him, he got his visa. And I believe him, he got married. Him and his wife are working, uh, are thinking about moving. So uh, he's definitely coming to the States. I don't know when this is going to happen. I think Royal Rumble would be a great place to debut him. Put him in NXT. You know what, dude? Here we go. You ready? Have Walter be the first big oppo opponent for Braun Strowman. Uh, Braun oh. Breaker. Braun Breaker. Oh, that would be awesome. Right? That would be awesome. Yeah. Really cool program. And you move, you move Walter up to the main roster because I think he's totally ready for the main roster. Have him sure. just do like a nice quick program over there, build him up as like this monster killer, and uh, move him to the main roster. You know what would be cool? Mm. And this is very out of left field. Yeah. Put Walter with Roman in that stable as an enforcer. Ah, oh, can he dress up like in the in the whole getup, or you think that wouldn't pass on TV? What do you mean? Like a little, little, uh, you know, with the with the jacket. I think he would. You think they'll keep I, that gimmick, like that very strong gimmick? I think that would be cool if you had. Picture this: so you have 
Walter in Roman's corner at some point as some kind of enforcer. They have yeah. a match, blah, blah, blah. And then at some point you get a program um, between Walter and Omos. Give me, give me the best way WWE could ruin Walter. Comedy character. Yeah, Bruno. Yeah, German comedy character. German comedy Austrian character. Comedy, whatever, yeah. whatever, like nonsense ideas they have rattling around backstage for like, you know, it'll be really great for Walter. Let's make him the Swedish chef. Yeah, let's make him the Swedish chef. Uh, Walter's shorter than Roman, by the way. Oh, interesting. He looks gigantic. He's five foot TV. seven, dude. You don't know yeah. that? You don't know <laughs> yeah. that? He's wrestling uh, kayfabe five foot seven. So <laughs> wrestling, you know, this this bizarre universe that we were in where everything split. The universe is split and they merge. Yeah. Jeff Jarrett is showing up in GCW <laughs> and he attacked Effie. Oh, uh, and now you've set up a match between Effie and Jeff Jarrett to possibly take place, I believe, at the um, at the Hammerstein. I think that that's going to be fun. I think, you know, listen, I have no nothing against Jeff Jarrett, but I think one of the yeah. funniest things I've ever heard about him is that he broke 10,000 guitars over people's heads and never sold a dime, never uh, made a dime off of it. He never sold a ticket. Yeah, yeah. He broke all those guitars, but never made money off of it. I think that's such like, a weird, funny assessment. Uh, but isn't isn't Jeff Jarrett also like uh, almost kayfabe wise, like the downfall of anything? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I have NWO. tremendous PTSD from it, from TNA. Yeah. I can't listen to that TNA theme. When I hear it, my brain just malfunctions. I just curl up in a ball and start crying. And he then did, I think of the he, king of the mountain. Uh, NWO, um, the TNA stuff. Yeah. Um, four Horsemen. Him, uh, four Horsemen, him uh, pseudo joining the Bullet Club. <laughs> like, oh, towards, yeah, he did join yeah. the Bullet Club. And high great. Uh, mm. NJPW is returning to Access in March. Great. Right after Impact on Thursdays. I think this is pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, very, very cool stuff. Since we're on NJPW, let's go into this. New Japan Wrestle Kingdom 16. Attendance was low, obviously, due to regulation. Mm. They had 12,047 paid fans for night one and 6,300 fans for night two. Um, there was... I was... Listen, am I shocked by this? I don't know, because I was one of these people. There was no buzz for this show. Yeah, you know, it's it's unfortunate. I think it got overshadowed by a lot of stuff. New Japan has taken a big hit in the last couple of years as far as what they could do, what they can't do, the lack of foreign talent, the, la the lack of people being able to go over there and war. Losing a lot of people. Losing a lot of people, and also, like, over the last few years, they've banked on big surprises during Wrestle Kingdom. You know, like there was like that sweet spot of like mm -hmm. 2015 to 2019 where you had like Jericho, Moxley, Kenny Omega, like all these guys wrestling on the card. Yeah. And, you know, Naito, Okada, like your, your, your top Jay White, like your top, top guys. And this, no Jay White on any of the Wrestle Kingdom How stuff. How is that possible? I think it might be a travel thing if I'm it could not. Be Mistaken, yeah, you know? I, I mean he's in he's in Florida, right? I believe he's in Florida, but I mean that is that is something, and I have to tell you, like very little buzz about this. Nobody was really talking about it. People really didn't care. I, I feel bad, but I also, you know, some of the booking has been weird, very Americanized booking happening yeah. in New Japan right now, which I don't necessarily think is a huge positive for them. Interesting. Uh, I. I there's a whole bunch of issues with New Japan right now for me. I, and and we'll go into this. You want to run down the card really quick? Yeah, so Wrestle Kingdom Night 1 out of 75 nights. <laughs> night uh, 1 of 18. Night 1 of 18. It's actually three nights, which I I guess is cool because the third night, which I believe takes place tonight, it, or took place already, at the Yokohama Arena is not being shown on New Japan World Live. Yeah. I think it's released within a week, right? Yeah, which is the Noah invasion, which is really cool. Anyway, yeah, but why? Why uh, wouldn't you wear that? I don't understand. I think it's because of the arena itself. Is that what it was? It, I think so. I think there's like some. It's something to do with the arena and a possible. Maybe they don't got internet. <laughs> <laughs> hey Tony, they cut the internet. They cut uh, the internet. Uh, all right, let's go into this. Uh, Wrestle Kingdom Night One, the King of Pro Wrestling 2022 New Japan Rambo Chase Owens. Toriyanu, Minoru Suzuki, and Sima advance. Uh, Yo defeated Sho. That was a fun match. Kenna, Taiji Shimori, and El Phantasmo beat Rocky Romero, uh, Taguchi, and Tanahashi. 
keep trying to keep that bullock up strong. Um, mm-hmm. Jeff Cobb, Will Ospreay, and Great Ocon, the United Empire beat Sonata, Bushi, and Naito. Uh, those Ingo Burnables at Japon. Shibata made his in-ring return, beating Ren Narita, who looks exactly like Shibata. So okay. that was kind of fun to watch. I have a question for you. So yeah. I the last two days, I've been very disconnected from stuff. So the story okay. with Shibata, this match is very interesting. It was going to be an exhibition originally, right? They yeah. had said that it was going to be an exhibition match. They weren't going to have like a full match. It was going to be very safe. And I think Shibata came out and like went into business for himself. That's what people were saying. And he's like, F it. We're going to have a real match. And he had a real match. It was very hard. It got very hard hitting at one point. It did. Like classic Shibata. But he was protecting his head as he should. He was. Um, it was fantastic. Did you know that they had to put his brain back in? They did you know that they took in? his brain out and they put it back in? Uh, you read that, right? I did read that. Did I you guys that read that? Eyes. First my of all, I don't, was it from the Observer? <laughs> Was that clip you, from the Observer? You sent me the I did the, the paragraph. I'm not sure who wrote it, but apparently, when Shibata suffered his injury, his brain had to be taken out of his head and then put back in his head. I'm like, and and I'm like, bro, I don't even know if that's possible. And I then MGK goes, MGK writes, he goes, so wait, they gave him a brain transplant. I'm like, can you imagine? I'm like, first of all, no, you didn't get a brain transplant. I'm like, but I'm like, he's not himself. If it's a, like, whose brain did they put in his body? <laughs> you know what? I want Braun Strowman's brain in Shibata's body. What am I doing in here? What am I doing in here? <laughs> Whoa, what am I doing in here, dude? And and Shibata's brain in Braun Strowman's body? In Braun that'd Strowman's awesome. body. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would be freaking awesome. Um, <laughs> I, listen, I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure you can't take a dude's brain out and then put it back in 10 minutes later. <laughs> oh, my God. You can't leave it on the counter while you prepare the rest of, of it. <laughs> Morbid. You know? Morbid says it was accurate. They put Shibata's head on a new body. That's what they ah. Uh, that's what it was. It was oh, inaccurate. It was, a head, transplant. It was okay. a head transplant. There you go. But dude, he looked great, man. I'm. You know what? What a great. It's so ridiculous, right? Like th- this guy, mm-hmm. he was very, very. Uh, he was not in good shape. By the way, no. I don't know where that where that quote was from. I'm just gonna say that I I have no yeah. idea who wrote that. I don't know if it was in the Observer. I don't know where the hell it was. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it was a joke, but I thought it was funny when I read it. Um, I I I think you know, like, I, do I want to see him have these matches again? I don't know. Like, this is a nice send off. If this is how you do it, and you have this great match as your final match, and you continue training these guys, awesome. <laughs> That's dangerous territory. I want the dude to stay as healthy as possible. Towards the end of the match, he did look like old Shibata. Like, he was he was kicking ass. Dude, you want to flip brains? You want to flip brains? Me and you? So you'll like be in my body? Friday. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. Be, do, I'll be in your body? Let's do a Freaky Friday. Uh, I would do so much jackass stunts if I was in your body. Uh, <laughs> you know what? All I would do is just read about ratings. Stop reading about ratings. You're ruining my body. Um, You're ruining my body. Next up, we had the ever the never open weight championship. Evil beat Tomohiro Ishii to win the title. Cool. Uh, next up, IWGP Tag Team Champions Goto and Yoshihashi beat the Dangerous Techers, Zack Saber Jr. and uh, Taichi to win the titles. Uh, IWGP Junior Heavyweight El Desperado beat Hiromu Takahashi. That was a fun match. Very too. fun. That match. was a very good match. Uh, Desperado's like 40 years old. Is he um, really? Yeah. He's like, How he's you, up there. I, go ahead. Let me ask you about, uh, about Hiromu. How do you think he's yeah. been since his injury? I think he's been good. I think he's been, he's been protecting his neck a little more. He's not Big taking time. those crazy bumps, yeah. but you know, like very solid, man. Like I really like that dude. His, uh, his entrance outfit was pretty, by the way, I don't, too. I don't mean his in-ring performance. I, I mean like changing his style a little bit. You know what I mean? I think he tweaked it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and your main event, IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, Kazuchika Okada beat the champion Shingo Takagi to win, to take back, I guess, what is rightfully his, I the guess IWGP so. Championship. Okada came out with the old belt, the old school belt, after he won. He bowed to the old belt. I guess this is really the end of the old belt. Oh, I hate Put on the new won. belt. It's a weird, it's a weird belt, but I think if anybody can make it look cool, it's Okada. Like the guy looks like a movie star, bro. He does. He does. He really looks like a movie. I mean, what a 
he's a fascinating guy, and I think the story of Okada will be he never does North America fully, and mm-hmm. he's like this star. You know, when he finally comes here and he has a match in North America that does, you know, like when he AW or whatever he does, uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be a one off, and I don't think he'll he'll be here. I think he's one of those like very protected people, like Tanahashi. I th- I agree. I would say Tanahashi more with that statement than Okada. I can't see Tanahashi doing like an extended tour like Suzuki, but I think Okada could do the bigs. He could do he could main event a bunch of stuff. Can and you then... see either one of them in WWE? Ooh. In main roster. that deal would have to be super sweet. What? Give me your circumstances to get Okada to do, let's say Okada versus Roman. Give me your circumstance to get I don't think they would ever, they would even be able to do that. I think they would do something, you know, in in their minds, it would be positive. They would do Okada and like Nakamura because they have a rivalry. Okay. You know, I I, I would have loved to see Tanahashi and and, uh, Cena. Tanahashi, Cena, dream match. And, and you know what? And I would I would see John Cena doing like the Hulk Hogan thing where like he's wrestling in Japan or he's wrestling like, a you know, a prominent Japanese wrestler and he starts wrestling, wrestling like when Hogan yeah. does like a like a head scissor takedown on Muda, <laughs> which is the most bizarre thing, mm-hmm. you know, and I got to tell you, Hogan's finisher in Japan, he should have just stuck with that, dude. That leg drop ruined his life. It effed up his back, huh? It really did. And he says it. He goes, he goes, I'm the biggest guy. I'm six foot eight and I could have done any move. And I picked fall, dropping on my ass every single night over and over and over again. Come on, brother. Dude, that, 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 that uh, the lariat is a great move. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Like his, uh, his double axe handle. Yeah. Finisher in double Japan. Double axe handle finisher. Yeah. Uh, we also had Wrestle Kingdom night two. Yuji Nagata, Hanma. Togi Magabi defeated Bad Luck Fale, Jade Ogito uh, in the opener. You had Master Wado, Kojima, Tenzan beating Desperado, Michino- Taka Mich- Michinoku, and Kenamaro, Suzuki Goon. I can't believe Taka's uh, still around. Uh, he's the best. Uh, Bushi, Hiromu, and Shingo beating Duki, uh, Duki. Zack Sabre Jr., <laughs> and uh, Taichi. Uh, you had your IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Championship, Robbie Eagles and Tiger Mask beating Taguchi and Rocky Romero, El Fantasmo and Ishimori to retain the titles. Uh, Tam Nakano and Saya Kamitani beat Mayu Iwatani and Starlight Kid. Um, this was the stardom match. Yes. And I, I read somewhere that the rumor, or I'm not 100% sure on this, that Starlight Kid is actually the nine-year-old girl that Kenny Omega wrestled. Is that, is that true? That th- I read it as a rumor. I'm not 100% sure. I can't confirm it. Anybody know that? I don't know. You had your King of Pro Wrestling. Well, actually, I'm going to go back because the original rumor was that that nine-year-old girl. It's me. Is, is Riho. Is you, Andrew. It's me. I'm the nine-year-old girl. You're the, nine-year-old. I, You're the forever the nine-year-old girl. <laughs> um, you had King of Pro Wrestling. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to go back. People were saying it's Riho. Mm. who was the nine-year-old girl originally, but she's not. Uh, you had the King of Pro Wrestling 2022. Suzuki beat Toriano, Chase Owens, and Sima to win the trophy. Very cool. Right, cool. Uh, Suzuki's had a great year. Yeah. Um, never open weight. Six-man tag. Evil. Takahashi. Show. The House of Torture. Beat. Goto. Yoshihashi, your favorite. And Yo to retain the titles. Um, Noah invades Wrestle Kingdom. A lot of promos thrown back and mm-hmm. forth. I think that was a very cool moment. You got to see Muda. All about it. Sonata beat the great Okan. Naito beat Jeff Cobb. Fun match. Um, you had your IWGP United States Championship in a no DQ. Tanahashi beating Kenta to win the title. Fantastic yeah. match. The high fly flow off the top of the ladder. Yeah. Highlight reel for Tanahashi. Fantastic. For yeah. sure. It was awesome. And your main event, Okada versus Osprey. Fantastic match. Again, mm-hmm. Okada's a movie star. Osprey has such a strong future in that company or whatever he does. Dave gave it 5.7 stars, and rightfully so. I think they did a great job at this. Um, Ridiculous. So here, here was my problem with this show. Okay. Way too many matches over two days. I mean nothing. Mm-hmm. Wrestle Kingdom is Wrestle Kingdom. It should be. I, I don't. Even for WrestleMania, I don't like multiple nights. I really don't. I think it. 
unless you have this mega card that you would say, oh my God, like, listen, if you have a hot, super hot product and you're working with another promotion and you have this ability to put together these matches that you you really are intrigued to see because either they're really going to be good matches or intriguing matches that you've never seen before. I could see doing two nights, but for sure to have it be so many tag matches, make yeah. uh, you know uh, trios matches. Uh, it, it's 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 too much. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten, eleven matches. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 matches over two nights. I'm sorry, 20 matches over two nights. Yeah, with That's no wild. real, like, you know, I I always enjoyed, and this is like a minor gripe too, I think. I love New Japan, but I always enjoyed, and I think you're going you're gonna to agree with me, a long Wrestle Kingdom, first four matches, I'm cool with your rumbles and your tag matches and your tournament matches. Yeah. But then when you get into that meaty, like those six main event matches, that's the bread and butter for Wrestle Kingdom for me. Interesting. Because they're yeah, all bad. I get it. I get it. You know, like I, I don't, I, I'm, listen, we were tape traders, right? Oh, yeah. That's how we got into it. Um, I, you know, there's, I, I hold, Japanese wrestling to a very high standard, especially on the sure. main. And, and by the way, they're doing. They're, they're still that that standard exists. It's just they're in a, they're in a, a not a dark period, but they're they're not in not in a position that they were even two years ago. And people were starting to be a little bit critical of you know their booking and how it's kind of changing a little bit. Listen, a, a lot of this was not their fault. They were they were given uh, really bad hands. They yeah. lost a lot of talent. Um, they the pandemic happened. A lot of talent couldn't go over there because I I'm willing to bet that we would have seen a lot more Japanese talent on AEW TV and vice versa. AEW talent for on sure. Japanese TV. For uh, sure. You know we're in a pandemic and it didn't happen. And it's a lot of wrestling, and they felt that they needed to get these guys on the card. And they did you watch the English commentary or the Japanese commentary? I straight up watched Japanese commentary because it okay. gets me so hyped. You had a way better <laughs> experience than me because I listened. I, I, I went back for night two for the main event and I watched okay. on the Japanese commentary. That building was on fire. And it was only 6,000 yeah. people. Yeah, Listening yeah. to the American commentary, the English commentary, I thought it was abysmal. The The mix was off. Uh, you had uh, people in different locations. So some people sounded way better. Some people sounded yeah. way worse. The the, the crowd wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, mic'd properly. Listen, I think it's really cool that we got Stardom and Noah involved in this. I, I think it's really cool, but yeah, I don't think they presented this in the best way they could have. That's all. I wish they did because I, I absolutely love New Japan. I, Same but, here. You know, you I think, gotta, this is nowhere near what it was two, three years ago. Do you think they just this was thrown together more out of tradition than anything? I think I think they were they, they did the best that they could, and again, not their fault. Yeah. They did the best no, that they could. Fault. I think, you know, also there was injuries, a lot of injuries this past year, a lot of up and downs. I think there was some fan backlash. There was definitely the travel issues, the COVID issues, all that stuff kind of, you know, boiled down to like kind of they're doing the best they can, you know, and yeah. that's great because you want them to thrive. You want them to succeed. I think they're going to have a really with Okada taking it all. I think they're going to write the ship in 2022 and we're going to get more cool New Japan stuff going forward. I hope so. I think I think once the travel opens up a little bit, you know, uh, mm. it, it'll it'll be. I think I think that'll be the difference for them. Yeah, they'll be able to do more, and obviously having a live crowd, you know, they're not able to cheer. That impacts the quality. Uh, I mean, first of all, have, being in a building where people aren't able to really cheer and putting on those kind of matches, it, it says mm -hmm. something about the caliber of performers. Yeah, you know, uh, where are we? We're at AW Rampage from last week. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about New this. Year's Eve Rampage. Yeah, that main event was something. It was something. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Loved it. I Me too. loved it. Like I said, this time next year, Penelope Ford is going to have that belt. Uh, we saw her. I, we're, yeah, we, you were with me. We saw her at Evolve, right, where she was managing Joey Janela. 
I believe so. And I was, and I think you're like, oh yeah, she, she's going to be a big star. And I, th- I hope so. I think she's fantastic. She's good. I think they work. They all work really, really hard in that match. Yeah, a lot, a lot of good spots. Mm-hmm. Uh, wild. It got wild. It did. I like those matches. Every now and then. Uh, this last Wednesday was the inaugural Dynamite on TBS, the Turner Broadcasting Station. Yeah, back uh, wrestling back on TBS. This was uh, pretty cool. Hey, by the way, big shout out to the guys over at the AEW on TV account, the, the Turner, the TBS account. Oh, they yeah. They have been on fire, those guys. They put out a flyer for like, uh, what, what was it? What, what what was the flyer? Let me just pull it up here. They did like an old school TBS flyer with a bunch of old school TV shows. Andy in, Griffin. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let me find it. But they it, it really... They're really creative. And some of the inside stuff that they say on there, I think Tony Khan responded to it on T- TV. Let me find this because it was done really well. And I-, I-, I love it when like a non, you know, like you don't expect these things from them. Like from yeah. a from a partner to tweet some stuff like that. So um, very, very it's cool. cool, man. It adds to the coolness uh, yeah. and like how much fun this stuff could be, you know? Yeah, very cool. I, I like that. They, they've they been throwing out some pretty cool references out there. Mm-hmm. Really, like, deep dive. So, kudos to them. So, last Wednesday, Dynamite, first Dynamite on TBS, you had your opening match, the World AW World Championship, Hangman versus uh, Brian Danielson, with your judges, Mark Henry, Jerry Lynn, and Paul White. Awesome. Okay. Did, did they or did they not do a terrible job at doing these these judges uh you know what whatever i think they did but you know like honestly like who cares when you know you know what does it for me about wrestling this is the the exploding barbed wire thing right if five percent of an amazing thing doesn't work i'm not it's not going to ruin it oh it's not it didn't ruin it for me at all um you know the judges a little whack but you know what great match hangman cemented himself as champion uh 30 minute match did you enjoy it did you said you enjoyed this more than part one i did i did i i but but again i i watched it very differently uh i love the cradle pile driver that he did in front of jerry lynn that oh, danielson yeah. did that was really cool um i i enjoyed the match it was really fast paced i i really liked mm-hmm. the 60 minute match also but i just feel like this was a little different um and it was you know, it started the show. I think a lot of people thought it would go longer, and it yeah. didn't. So it came out of you know, it was like a surprise finish. Double, double juice, both of them covered double in juice, blood. Uh, and I thought it was a great finish. I thought it, it it told a great story. The match. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, next up, you had a uh, interesting segment: Sean Dean beating MJF by a smart disqualification. Yeah, uh, there was a CM Punk run in. MJF clears the ring. CM Punk um, GTS is Sean Dean, the captain Sean Dean, giving MJF his first loss of the year. He, first loss ever, I think, right? Singles loss. No, is no, it, no. He lost first before. Loss first loss of yeah. the year. Yeah. First loss um, of the year. So it throws off his standings. Also, their promos back and forth. Pretty excellent, man. This is drawing from a lot of real life stuff and it it's kind of interesting i wonder if punk told him like hey you know what if you want to go there go there yeah well the, that promo was fantastic so the key points here from that promo were uh mjf saying something like maybe maybe in a couple of years i'll go and i'll headline wrestlemania yeah right something you've never been able to do which a lot of people thought it was like a shoot and cm punk got mm-hmm. angry at it i'm like dude you, you think these guys didn't talk about this like they're both very creative guys exactly uh, CM Punk comes back with the line of, you know, something along the lines of, you know, go ahead and and feature night four of their buy one, get two night, you know, WrestleMania, and you're going to end up here after they fire your ass or something like that, which was a nice comeback. Uh, these yeah. two have been fantastic back and forth. Oh, yeah. Uh, really memorable stuff. Uh, really good chemistry. I just hope they have that chemistry in the ring. I do think judging by the writing on the wall i do think mjf is going to take the win over punk you think so punk doesn't need the win he doesn't need the win but i think nah. this is a this is a uh, either way i'm happy yeah same here uh chris, chris jericho call comes out calls out 2.0 
gets attacked by Daniel Garcia, but Kingston and Santana and Ortiz make the save. I like what they're doing with 2.0 and Danny Garcia. They're setting them up to be future players. Yeah, dude. I, I, I like them a lot. Like, what, what, a, what a classic heel, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I, just loud, obnoxious. It works for me. I think some people are annoyed by it, but it, I, I actually like it. I like 2.0. Jericho mentioned that this is the first time he's on TBS since April of 1999, Crazy. where he lost to Booker T on Thunder. Very nuts. Uh, mm -hmm. Next up, you had Wardlow with Sean Spears beating Antonio Zambrano. Uh, and then you had your TBS championship match, Jade Cargill with Mark Sterling beating Ruby Soho. Uh, this was the finals of the tournament, and Jade Cargill won. She's the inaugural TBS champion. How would you feel about this? So Jade Cargill came out, by the way, in storm in a storm outfit. Who I was that? trying not to talk about it because it really did it for me. <laughs> I know. And, and by the way, do you know why she came out as storm? Why? Apparently, that's how she got a lot of popularity because she did this awesome Storm cosplay and she posted the photo and it got really like blew up a couple of years ago. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Do you remember that? Absolutely. Let me see if I... Jade Card. Ridiculous. Gill, Ridiculous. Storm. There's a few images of her yes. in that outfit with yeah. like an amazing, like photoshopped cloudy background and all that. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool uh, gear on her. How would you feel about the match? Uh, I thought it was fine. Uh, you know, she's... Listen, they're, they're booking her as a monster. I get it. She's not, you know, she's not five-star. She's not having five-star matches, but she doesn't need to. I think everything, her look pulls it off. Yeah. You um, know, the, the, look is, the look is what's selling it, and I, and I, mm -hmm. and I like the visual of it. Um... I just hope that she gets way better and, and continues on because I, there's something there. There was a great presence in her. Yeah. Uh, I just hope that it continues. You had uh, up next Malachi Black uh, versus Brian Pillman. I love how Malachi Black is just messing with the Pillman, the Pillman Jr. The, uh, well, Pillman with the uh, with the I guess the, the worked botch, right? Mm -hmm. Where she, yeah. he mm -hmm. went on the top and then slipped. And that was a mistake where he murdered uh, Pillman. But I want I I really guys I know I know people from there listen. If you could send this to Pillman Jr., I'm dying because I know it's going to happen. I'm dying for him to turn into the loose cannon. You really want that to happen? You I think really, he's going to be pushed? I'm a big you fan think, of his. I really too, enjoy do you, him. Do you think Malachi Black? Excuse me. Do you think Malachi Black will push him so far enough that he gets unhinged? I hope so. I don't know if that's going to happen. I think this program might be over uh, by the looks of things, but I okay. really, I, I, I think Pil there's something, I don't know. I was a big Pillman fan, so Same maybe here. maybe that plays a big part in this, but I think, you know, he's gotten stocky now. He's gotten bigger. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, this, it's so weird to say, like, I get, like, such a nice feeling from him. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to see him be super successful in this. Same here, yeah. Uh, and I think he works super hard, and I think he's a great athlete. Uh, I really want him to slowly start losing it. And I did think that T-shirt he was wearing a couple of weeks ago was the beginning of it. That Venom T-shirt? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that let, was the beginning. Now, let me ask you this. What did you make of the lights going in and out during the entire night? So that was it the entire night, or was it during the uh, the main event? It was a couple of times during the night uh, and also during a Malachi Black segment, I kept thinking, oh, here comes Brody. either Wyndham or Brody King. What about you? Well, Brody King is signed, right? Do you yeah. call him Brody? I call him Brody King. Do you call him Brody King? Yeah. I don't know if you stick with that name. What would you call him if you if they're gonna further him with the House of Black? Would he have like a like Malachi Black and then like Mordecai Black? Mordecai Black, yeah. <laughs> I, I I want it to all be about the uh, the macabre macabre. I would call him macabre. The uh, macabre Black or no. maybe Leon Black. Leon Bl Leon yeah. Vader. <laughs> <sighs> what is this? Why did he do this? Why did he Why did he become Doctor Zoeberg and do this? This thing. The Hang on. I'm you not, want to see I'm my not, Vader? Not, yeah, oh, I want to see my Vader. Ready? <laughs> That's my Vader. Why did he do this? Why? Why is this like? That's a V. When, That's clearly yeah, a V. Oh, for Vader? 
Yeah, for Vader. I mean, I, I always saw, saw it as like a Dr. Zoidberg thing. <laughs> he doesn't have, he, Vader didn't, the Vader the wrestler does not have lobster claws for hands. He has lobster claws for hands and he has a red face. You know, I've been saying, we've been doing this show for 10 years. I've pretty much almost every other episode, I say that you need glasses. I think it's about time, man. <laughs> it's about time. I think it's about time. Uh, and so, you're, so the, uh, the main event, go ahead. Sorry. Your main event, AEW World Tag Team Championship, Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus with Christian Cage beating the Lucha Brothers with Alex Eberhantes to win the titles. Great match. They put on a show. Yeah. This was a very PWG style match. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, Ray Phoenix destroyed his arm, but he's oh going to be okay. Oh, my God. He, he went through the table and his mm -hmm. arm dislocated the other way. Oh, what a! It was gruesome, and in that replay, it was even worse. Yeah. What did you think of the end, where all the tag teams came out and they were just like staring at them? That really did it for me. I thought that was such a cool moment where you saw all the tag teams want that title now that it's in Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus's hands, arguably like rookies, right? In terms of like kayfabe, and. Oddly missing from that equation were the Bucks. Bucks were not there. Very interesting. Yeah, Bucks. And I, well, they have COVID, right? I don't know. Um, but the Bucks weren't there. And I think this is going to lead to some really cool stuff. FDR. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's, the, uh, you know, the, the lights going off in this match, Rich. Do you remember mm -hmm. when it happened? It happened after the Pillman thing, and it happened during the main event. It happened in the main event during uh, when they went for the pin. When uh, yeah, when the Lucha Bros went for the pin, and the lights went out, and essentially I took that as Malachi Black cost them the title, and they're going to be in a feud with with uh, you know I guess if it's Brody King and Malachi Black because they are they are PWG tag team champions they've teamed up many times in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, if it, it it'll be them as a tag team versus uh, the Lucha Bros to start it. Do you want to see the PWG belts defended on AEW? No. I don't want PWG ever syndicated anywhere. I still want them to only do Blu-rays and DVDs. Just keep it what it is. Keep it what it is. No, I, I mean, listen, it'd be cool. It'd be, it'd be really cool. I'm into it. Are the fans ready to dive into what PWG is? I think they get enough of it. We've gotten the PWG style, you know, like, we talk about like how like Ring of Honor, ECW mm. inspired a certain style of wrestling that yeah. somehow bizarrely turned into Ring of Honor. And right. Ring of Honor, and then like now PWG is like another evolution of that. I agree with that. Very interesting. That's how I see. It's very interesting stuff. Uh, Last night, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Last night we had AW Rampage. Um, Adam Cole beat Jake Atlas. Jake Atlas got hurt, but not as hurt as people think. Um, I think he popped his knee. They announced Cody, uh, Cody Rhodes positive for COVID, and the match will be changed for Saturday. Originally, it was supposed to be Sammy Guevara versus Cody for a rematch of the TNT title, but yeah. they announced Dustin will replace Cody, and the match will be for, the, for an interim TNT championship until Cody gets better. I'm not sure how that works. I don't know either, but this is... So, <laughs> uh, I... Yesterday afternoon, I sent I sent the group chat, you know, a message. I was like, "Hey, uh, what time did I send you that, Rich?" In the group chat. Ooh, uh, like it was sometime in the up. afternoon. But essentially, I was told that you know C C Cody's out. He has uh, he has COVID, and I was like, "Oh crap! What happens now?" And he goes, "Oh, they they're still going to have a TNT title match, and they're having an interim title." I'm like, "Who's who's defending mm -hmm. it?" He goes, "Dustin's going to be in it." So I didn't I didn't want to spoil it for anybody. So I, I tweeted. I'm like, oh, I'm really looking forward to that match. Um, OK, cool. I'm, I, have they ever done an interim champion like that? Like announced an interim so. champion? I don't think no. so. We've had like multiple people say that they're the actual champion. Mm -hmm. But we've never had like an interim title. Uh, very cool. Unique, different, you know? Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I always like seeing Dustin wrestle. What if Dustin wins? And that's wins? tonight. That is tonight, by the way, the Battle of the Belts. Mm -hmm. Battle of the Belts uh, tonight. So Hook beat Aaron Solo uh, with QT Marshall, three minutes, 19. Listen, that kid is over. Uh, Hook did a amazing leg hooking suplex, and 
he delivered a crazy suplex to QT Marshall, who sold it like a million bucks. Um, I'm digging this. I'm digging this. I'm digging the whole hook thing. How about you? Uh, me too. I I'm very much liking it. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't. I, I want them to take the time with this. Okay. Take their time. Take their time. Let Fair this enough. build up. Like turn this into like. Okay. Orange Cassidy, right? Okay. Orange Cassidy came from online hype. Right? Yes. Is, isn't that how it came? That that's where it, it originated. Like it was all. It was mostly an online following. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been invited to a Seinfeld wrestling group. I don't even know what this would even entail, but I'm very fascinated by about? this. I just got a message <laughs> inviting me to a Seinfeld wrestling group. You got to stop reading your messages while we do so the show. Sorry. <laughs> it, it it constantly pops up. Um, like I don't want like Orange Cassidy. It's it took me a while mm -hmm. to like get into it, but like he was a big cult following online, and that's how it oh, built. Yeah. And the same thing's happening for Hook. I just feel that they could do a way stronger job with Hook once he gets to that point. You know, give it like another six months before he challenges anybody legitimate. I think it's a lot of fun, and it kind of put it puts him over, and it sort of puts Team Taz over, also, man. Who to who to thought, right? Yeah. Who to thought? Taz. Um. Well, Brian Cage is missing. But you know Hobbs, Ricky Starks, and Hook. Yeah. What a team! What a team! What a team! All right, and your main event last night: Eddie Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz beating Dana Garcia in two point oh. Great main event, a lot of fun. Um, I like that Eddie's teaming with Santana and Ortiz. There's that Jericho thing mm -hmm. that's also there. So you think they're gonna have a match, or you think they're gonna team up? I think it's gonna be both. Both they'll 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 look both okay. I, I think we've you and I have only been watching wrestling for sixty years. <laughs> <laughs> we've seen it all. We've seen it all. Um, tonight, AW Battle of the Belts, interim TNT Championship match, Dustin versus Sammy. Andrew, who takes it? I think you know, like both both scenarios are great, right? Like I can see Dustin winning somehow. Dustin gets the mm -hmm. title, and now you get a brother versus brother match again. <laughs> I would love that. With both titles on the line, and you do that thing again. Or two, Sammy wins. Cody and Dustin, like, they have, like, a big problem, right? And mm -hmm. furthering Cody's bizarre uh, superhero heel turn. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, like, furthering that Homelander gimmick where he, like, beats the crap out of Dustin for losing. Uh, I, I'd like to Ooh. see both. I don't care. I I'll go both directions. I don't mind that. I like the opening of like, you could also have Dustin almost turn on Cody and say, hey, listen, it's been a while since I held a championship. I kind of like how this feels. Yeah. You know, and then have them do the feud that way. Uh, you also have the AEW Women's Championship, Britt Baker versus Riho. I feel like this is going to be an excellent match. It should be. <sighs> I, I, I think... I think for Britt Baker, they need to now create new opponents. Yes, I think they've 100%. hit that. They've hit that wall where they need to keep. They need to create somebody new for her to face, uh, which they're doing a good job over the last couple, you know, weeks. They've been really building uh, other female talent on TV. Uh, we should go back to SmackDown for a minute, Rich, because we didn't mm -hmm. touch on this. Uh, what oh did you no, think not at all. Night? We skipped over because we wanted to get through everything. But what did you think of uh, SmackDown? So SmackDown last night was interesting i like the opener a great lot. opener fantastic you know, great opener. opener brock came out with paul Heyman. roman comes out and there's like a weird brock paul Heyman, roman reigns love triangle where that's what it is uh paul Heyman has stockholm syndrome pretty much from being under the thumb of roman reigns and brock started kind of uh, cussing out paul and then roman's like yo man don't talk to him like that yeah yeah, because first of all, he insulted him, and then he's like, nah, you can't talk to him like that. I'm like, what is happening here? What is going on? I thought it was cool. Yeah. Um, I want to see those titles. I want to see a title for title match. I really, Absolutely. really do. Because Absolutely. think about it. We've seen this match five million times, right? This not tired is, of it. Not, I'm not tired of it either, but if you want to mm. up the ante as like the final time, you know, you do a title for title, but who takes it? Yeah, I think uh, I think Roman. If they, I want them to do a unification. I think as as cool as it is, as it is to having two belts on your shoulders, I want like whatever whatever name they come up with, like the WWE Mega Super Champion or whatever oh. the hell it is. 
I think that should go to Roman to further establish him as like this insane super boss. Brock said both belts. Brock was undisputed unified champion, yes. right? He had both yes. of them. He had the uh, world title and the WWE title. Um, I would, you know, there's multiple things. You do this at, at SummerSlam. Oh, uh, SummerSlam, jeez. You do this at uh, Royal Rumble. Maybe you have Seth mm. cost somebody the title. Or you have, you know, somebody else cost somebody the title. Now you set up a different championship. Uh, I'm very intrigued. And I say this every year. I always like this time of the year for WWE leading mm -hmm. into WrestleMania because now you start seeing things that you normally don't see. And listen, this may this yeah. may have been a happy mistake for them, a happy blessing that maybe they're going to revert back. Maybe they're going to correct this change. But we did also see Seth Rollins show up on SmackDown. Yeah, yeah. Did you see how he knocked as when he knocked on Roman's door? He knocked with the shield theme. Yeah, listen, they can go back to the well with that a million times. And plus, they yeah. both have history with Brock Lesnar. I think I think they're going to have a match. I think he's going to face uh, Roman. Ooh, Maybe that's a WrestleMania match. I wouldn't mind that either. I wouldn't I'd be either. cool with that. Yeah. Uh, we also missed uh, Ricky Starks is going to defend his FTW championship against Matt Seidel tonight. Uh, oh, really? They added that? Yeah, they added that yesterday on air. Love that stupid title. It's a great title. Do you wish you had the FTW belt? Yeah, I wish I had the FTW belt. I like the old FTW belt. Remember the old FTW belt? Yes. It was a winged eagle. Yes, that was awesome. Uh, do you want to do questions? Let's do it, boys and girls. Question time. Submit your questions in the chat room. We got about 15 minutes here. Uh, we're going to run down these questions and uh, hopefully answer everything that you sent us. Guys, if you want your questions to get read immediately feel free to super chat us if you're in the chat room uh we're gonna do those right now all right this first super chat is from our buddy ryan martins uh 499 thank you ryan regarding the nil i think gable Stevenson was the only one to get that ball rolling for wwe his potential is through the roof and i'm excited for him yeah me too i'm excited for it i i he's obviously he's a star athlete i just hope he transitions into professional wrestling you know, the yeah, right way. Absolutely. Not everybody's going to be a Kurt Angle. And there is a lot of that right. comparison where, you know, this guy is going to be able to become that. I don't know. You got to give it time. You got to see how he is. It's a different program. Um, he's very soft spoken. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike Angle. Angle was deranged always, you know, with his always promos. Deranged. He was always yeah. deranged, which was great in a positive way. Uh, Roman versus, and by the way, the match is Roman and um, Seth for Royal Rumble. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so that's happening. Okay, very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, I don't know. Do you think Gable Steveson will have a have a like a mega run? Again, my my thoughts are, and don't take this verbatim, I just hope they don't he's not one of those guys that they hire only to fire. I don't think so. I don't I don't think so. I think he's gonna no. I think they're gonna try everything to make it work. I want to see uh, him succeed for sure, but you know, like I feel like we've been we've been burned so many times in the last couple of years. Yep. All right. Uh, next up, we got our buddy Bob Rowe, oh. five dollars for another episode of Giorgio Sukulis's and the Ancient Armenians. Dude, they, they should do that about us. We came out of I, an egg. Uh, I think so. Like Muda. Like Muda. <laughs> we came out of an egg. Bob is absolutely right. Brutal Bob Rowe, my 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 attorney. Uh, next up, we got another four ninety nine from Ryan Martins. NXT two point oh isn't as bad as people make it out to be. I think it's because people are holding it to the black and gold standard, and they still have some players there with regard to two point oh. I don't know, man. It's a different. It's a different. Uh, we got to give it time. Uh, I, you know, I'm watching it. There's certain things that I really enjoy. There's certain things that are, I really don't care for. Yeah. You know, it, it's, like anything. It's not. It's not like a. A collaboration of the best independent talent anymore it's it's a different company it's a totally different approach let's get to the next one here this next one is from tiff stratton fan on youtube oh hello have you heard of more wwe women's surprises for the royal rumble uh who did they announce yesterday let me see here ah here we go we got rhea ripley nikki ash Aaliyah. Natty, 
Shayna Baszler, Summer Rae. Summer Rae? Yeah, Summer Rae. Wow, okay. Tamina, Dana Brooke, Kelly Kelly, Naomi, Carmella, Zelina Vega, Michelle McCool. I hope Michelle McCool comes out as The Undertaker. That'd be amazing. She needs to start doing that. The Bella Twins, both. Lita uh, and might be the, might be the Mickey, return of James, Andy Bella. Mickey James, the current Impact Champion, Women's Champion. By the way, WWE on their social media listed her as Mickey James Impact Women's Champion. Knockout, knockout champion. Impact Knockouts Champion. How Bizarre cool is to How say. gracious. Very cool. Very cool. Maybe this How is their I'm sorry. How gracious is it? For Mickey James to turn around and actually want to work with WWE again after they sent her all her stuff. Oh, did you just disappear? I lost Rich. Let's give it a minute. Let's see where oh. Rich is. Are you back? I'm here. Um, you, I lost you for you, a second. You, I lost you too. You did. I'm glad we're back together. Oh, can can too. we hear each other now? Yes, I can, we can. Okay. Uh, Are you recording cool. this? I am recording it. <laughs> uh, Mickey James oh, coming no. in. It, they promoted the Impact, you know, Knockouts Champion, which was pretty interesting. I've never seen WWE do that before. So Scott Demore actually said, you know, we're always open to do crossovers like this. But I think the caveat was, who knows if she's going to be Impact Champion after tonight mm -hmm. in her match with Diana Peraza? Yeah, I want Diana to win. Yeah, for sure. Uh, next up, we got another super chat from Ryan Martins. Uh, any chance we see some returns in the Rumble match in both the men's and women's other than who was announced last night? Hoping it's Bray. Uh, by the way, both both pretty much uh, to answer that other question, I think we'll get a couple more surprises for the women's oh, side. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I, Stacey I didn't Keebler. That. Uh, man, I would love to see Stacey Keebler come back, but she, she dropped them unbelievably after Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> yeah, I think she tried to be legitimate and then started dating George Clooney, and I don't know what she does now. Maybe she's making candles or some bullshit. That's it. She's know. done. She's set. <laughs> she's done for life. Uh, let's see. She dated Clooney for a while. Yeah. Uh, so any chance what do you we think? see returns in the Rumble? I think this year we'll get some. Uh, last year, remember, we didn't get much because of the whole pandemic, but I think this year we'll see a couple surprises in the Rumble. Yeah, dude. Braun Strowman. Maybe. What if you get what if you get Bray? Bray would be cool, but who knows? You know? Um Do you think AEW or any other company should do a Royal Rumble esque big event? Don't they do? Don't they do the um the don't they have a Royal Rumble match? They do, but they it's the confusing um I hate it. Joker whatever yeah. thing. All right. Next up, this is from EMC four K. Thank you for the super chat. Seeing as how AEW champs to be get seeing as how AEW's champs seem to be getting younger, Jericho 51, Hangman 30, do you feel the next champ for AEW will be one of the four pillars starting with MJF? I don't think so. Uh, uh I, I think I see I, I don't have that age thing that a lot of people do when it comes to looking at talent. I think whatever mm -hmm. the hot program is, you go there. You don't go based on if they're too young or too old. If it's working, it's working. Uh, if it's not working, you got to be really, you know, conscious of that. Um, MJF, who? So who to be? MJF, Jungle Boy. Who else would it be for the guys? Sammy, Darby, Sammy. Uh, I don't think so. I think the next one is probably going to go to maybe a Danielson or a Punk. Maybe MJF. It, it, out of all of them, I would say MJF has the most, but he doesn't need the title yet. No. You don't need to do that yet. Keep keep no. him the way he is and then make it into a big deal. I, I don't know. I, I have a feeling Punk's going to get that title. Sooner than later. I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know why I get that feeling. Sooner than later. Uh, let's see. How about you? Uh, what do you think? One... I think it's going to eventually rotate between Sammy and Darby and MJF and Jungle Boy, but not for another few years. I also do think that when MJF gets that title, he's going to hold on to it, much like Triple H, for a year and a half until yeah. like some kind of mega face takes it off of him. You know? And who knows yeah. who that's going to be? The guy's had some great feuds over the past couple of years. Uh, yeah. This one is from our buddy Chris. Four ninety nine. Thank you. With Hangman getting the win over Danielson, what's next for both men? Adam Cole versus Hangman and Danielson versus who? 
Danielson versus who? Let's see. With Hangman getting the win over Danielson, who's next for both men? Um, I would have. I don't know. I think that's a great question. You know, right now you have you do have John Moxley make uh, possibly appearing soon. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have Kenny Omega sometime in February or March, hopefully. Um, and maybe someone else shows up. But what if Joe shows up and challenges for that title immediately? You know, oh, what if, cool. you know, you have so many options here. I don't mm -hmm. know. I, and I like that. I don't know. I, I, I like the, the surprise element to this, but maybe mm -hmm. this feud is not over between Hangman and Danielson. Yeah, I don't think it's over, man. I think AEW has done a good job of doing long-term feuding where they don't just drop the feuds where there's no interaction. You yeah. Know? All right, let's see here. Uh, this is from OK Johnny. Yeah. Did you guys hear that Dunn and Ciampa had dark matches before SmackDown? Yes, they had a dark match. Ooh, very cool. What does that say? Uh, listen, SmackDown, right? SmackDown. I think Ciampa. Roster. I think Ciampa will do great on the main roster. Same here. Same here. Uh, this one's from Lenny Baker off of Twitch. How damning an indictment is it that barely a year after kicking Mickey James to the curb, she's being brought back for the Women's Rumble? I don't know. I think it's her business. You know, it, it, it's we don't know the the conversations that they've had. Maybe they were like, listen, uh, we really effed up here. We've been sending everybody shit in a garbage bag over the last couple of years. And We've it's been really doing this for years. <laughs> I don't know why the hell we did this. You know, like it could have been one yeah. of those moments. Like sometimes like, you know, not not a defense, but like sometimes people just put zero thought in certain things because they just yeah. want to get it over. Like, ah, fuck it. I got to mail this shit to her. And they, they put in the goddamn garbage bag and mailed it and not thinking like the optics look terrible. Like, I don't want to get my stuff in a garbage bag. But also, would I care? Like, would you care if you got your stuff back in like a garbage bag in a box? Like, you know, would you be question. like, like, you know, like, would you be like, oh, how dare they? I would definitely be like, what the F? I would you be know? like, like, what the hell? Like, they didn't have any boxes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I would say maybe like, but like. We don't know the conversation that they had. Obviously, right. Mickey is fine with it to, to appear. Uh, I know that they were very apologetic. Stephanie made a public apology to her mm -hmm. on Twitter. Uh, I think they realize how bad that looks, but they were also in the middle of a pandemic. But yeah. again, that's not an excuse for them. But like, we don't know what the process, what was going on. And obviously, you know, who knows? Mickey knows. And obviously, it was good enough for her to want to return back for the Rumble. I got a question for you. Yeah. So if you were in that situation, would you have rather they send you your stuff in a garbage bag or that they threw it out? Like if you called and were like, oh, you know, I got some stuff over there. And then somebody was like, yeah, we threw that out. Oh, you know, that happened to me. That happened to me when I when I left my job a couple of years ago. Oh, I, yeah? had, I had a bunch of shit there. I told them I come get it. Uh, they said, OK, no problem. Uh, I was like, listen, I'll be back like in, uh, like I never went to pick it up. They never called me and somebody threw it out. That sucks. And I was like, you know what? That's my fault. I should have picked it up. All right, uh, moving on. This is from Orion. Which NXT superstars do you think it would do you think would get the biggest pop in the Rumble? Maybe Tony D'Angelo. Uh, Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker for sure. I don't think I on honestly don't think the main roster knows who Tony D'Angelo is. I don't think the people that watch or have any concept of him. No. Even the people that watch NXT, like we love, we we're into it. <laughs> we find it funny. We're yeah. into the gimmick. But I don't think anybody in the world really is is sold on it totally, other than for sure. like mega fans of wrestling. You know who'd get a big pop? Mandy who? Rose. Mandy Rose will get a huge pop. Oh, you know what? Yeah. She, maybe she'll show up in the uh, Rumble. Yeah, I think that would be cool. That's a possibility. This is from Morbid478 on Twitch. Does Mickey James come out to hardcore country for her WWE oh, music? Dude, Morbid, this is the best question ever. Love the freaking uh, Morty. Burr, opening burr, up his burr, third burr. eye on uh, DMT. Uh, I yeah, I would love to have uh, hardcore country. You know what? And that would be such like a nice little little nod. Yeah, you know. Yeah, for sure. I'm into that. This next one is from Donde Stas on YouTube. Any news about WWE's pay per view in the UK this September? Uh, that that uh, other than they're having a pay per view there, I don't I don't know beyond it right now. I know that the story, some people were saying it was going to be in Wales. Um, and then I was told that that's very too, that's too soon to say that they're going to have it in Wales. But mm. the person I spoke to said, you know, does it make sense to have it there when all the media connections are all in London? 
you know interesting yeah so i don't know uh i know that i know that people reported uh different areas in the uk uh if i were to if i was doing it i would say you want to stick to where you're going to get the most possible press and that's being in london so where would they do in london they could do like, what, i mean arena? they're doing a stadium yeah they could do yeah. Wembley, right yeah i think so definitely definitely bigger the better right yeah uh, this is off of Twitter. This is from at Mox for Life. Is there any chance in seeing both Noah and AEW working together since AEW already have a partnership with other cyber fight companies like DDT and TJPW? I don't know. I'd like that. That'd I wouldn't mind cool. that either. I wouldn't mind you want that. More you want more Muda? I, I would like Muda, but you know, here, here's uh, listen. Uh, I would love Muda. Yeah. And 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 I, you know what? I'm going to predict something. I think we're going to mm -hmm. see Muda show up on AEW in 2022. Like full Muda. This thing? Like uh, when he comes he, out like this? Yeah, when he when he's like doing this thing and he's got the mask on yeah. and he's spraying everybody, spraying everybody down. I don't see Tajiri. Uh, by the way, that beautiful Muda painting that you drew for me, uh -huh. that you painted for me, I absolutely love. I look at that thing constantly and I say, what what an unbelievably talented human being you are. I appreciate that. I, gotta I absolutely love it. I absolutely I'm love actually it. gonna I actually am gonna start doing more wrestling related artwork. Dude, why soon. don't we do it live? Can you do it in one sitting? I think I could do it in one sitting. Is it is like it a, like do you normally do it in one sitting or no, you go back? I go back usually. I'll take a break, I'll do stuff, but I, let's see, let's see. Maybe we could do it. Oh, that'd be that'd cool. Be like a like a like a tip like a like a donation one where like people just tip yeah. for you to continue doing it. And then whoever wants to buy it could buy it at the end. Yeah. I think that's freaking you know what? I absolutely love that. I love um it. I, I was thinking about doing like smaller pieces. I'll show you a couple of them that I did last cool. year. But you know, we'll figure that out. That's a that's a art men. <laughs> art men. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This next one is from Tune seventy seven, another super chat. Yeah, thank you, dude. Raquel has a debut at Royal Rumble, right? She's done all she needs in NXT. I think she could show up in Royal Rumble. Uh yeah, I I think she's great. Uh, you know she's she's impressive to look at. You know she's big, strong. Yeah, she can show up. I think um, I think you're gonna get a lot of NXTs like uh, Io Shirai maybe showing up, Dakota Kai. Did you lose me? No, I'm just listening. Oh. I just oh, like hearing you uh, sometimes. Just listen just to my like voice. Listen. All right, yeah, just like listen. Just, you ready for another one? Yeah, let's do it. This next one's from Charlie Orr, our friend Charlie. What's up? Do you think Ronda Rousey wins the Royal Rumble match? That would be dope if she faced Becky. That would be pretty cool. That would, but I don't think she's... Uh, she just had the baby. She's not. She hasn't been training for wrestling. Uh, I do think we're going to get that match. I just don't know when. Maybe that's a, that's a, you know, maybe that's a SummerSlam match. Maybe that's a WrestleMania match next year. Maybe that's a special match somewhere. Uh, I definitely... They, they definitely want to come back to Ronda Rousey. I don't... Ronda just needs to be, you know, in the mood. Yeah, I think so too. I think that would be such a cool thing, but she was um, fantastic for them. And, and, and looking back, and I know a lot of people poo pooed on her for whatever reason. I think yeah. her presentation was fa fantastic. I think her in ring was super impressive. Yeah, uh, she looked great. She was believable. Um, I, I was really a big fan of Ronda Rousey in WWE. Um, I liked her. My one dumb gripe is I was never a fan of the weird, wacky, zany eye makeup. Oh, the eye makeup was terrible. That that, but that was like a mistake. Don't 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 make her look like uh you know Mac from Always Sunny being the night man. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. That's what my I'm... gimmick. That's what I do. Was it a tribute to the night man? I think it was a night man. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Uh, this is not in the queue, but this is from Supersonic X. Who will be number thirty? And shock the world in the women's rumble. As Asuka, Alexa Bliss, Bailey, or Sasha. You know what? What if they do like Paige? Ooh. Not saying it is, but like for me, I'd be I'd be that'd be fun. Paige, Bailey, Trish Stratus would be cool. Trish Stratus, yeah. 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 What if, what if you have Trish eliminate Lita and you set up a WrestleMania match between Lita and Trish for the final time? I wouldn't mind that either. I, would love I feel that. like that would be like a barn burner. Love both of those. Love both of them. Lita and Trish. Love them equally. Absolutely. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, this is from Brendan Taylor on YouTube. Are there any budget cuts this year? Yes. We got the first set. Yeah, yeah we're also going to fire gonna be, Geek. 
This is for firing MG Geek. Uh, no, I, I think this is this is a common thing now in the company. They're constantly going to reevaluate. You're looking back every mm-hmm. couple of months and seeing what's working, what's not, and cut your losses. A very different corporate structure, man. Uh, this is the fr- you know this is the first time in this company's history that you don't have somebody in the wrestling business, you know, essentially like George Barrios and Michelle Wilson, like they were, they were fine, but they were McMahon was, they came in when McMahon was like still Vince doing everything. Barrios was there for like 20 years. This is the first time we've seen somebody come in, not from wrestling has a very Mm -hmm. high success rate outside of pro wrestling in in sports, uh, in, in sports, uh, corporate mm-hmm. structures and things like that uh built a tremendous team i don't think anybody's ever done that before in that company and you have non-wrestling people running a wrestling company fully yeah i, I think this is a very different wwe that's not under the the spell of a mcmahon and i'm not saying that in a negative way you know i'm not saying that that's a bad thing i'm not saying it's a good thing i'm just saying it's a very different thing for a very different company nick khan is not his he's not he doesn't have like a booking philosophy and running a company on the corporate side. He runs numbers. He runs a corporate business. So, right. yeah, budget cuts are going to be there. Uh, do you want to end it on a high note? Yeah, whatever. This is or from Chris note. Farrell, member from five months. Member for five months. Great show yeah. today. Saturdays are fun ones. Whoa, yes. I like Saturday shows. Me too. I like it. I do like the Saturday morning. I get some coffee, get a workout in. Yeah. Get some chilling. I don't have any pants on. Yeah, I got pants on. My kids just came back from Taekwondo, and guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, gonna give karate them, a, them. I'm gonna get. The, I'm gonna karate them. I found my gi. Oh, I gotta see this. I got it. You want? I'll send you a photo of it. I'm gonna put it on. I'll Please. send you a photo. I still got the big Please Greek flag do. on it. <laughs> see, I didn't have that one. I didn't have Dude, that. We one. were in a cult. Like, we were in a like, cult. No thanks. No. Yeah, you, I, you I, didn't I have. The, you didn't have the flags. You didn't have the patches. I didn't have the flags. No, oh, I had, the, I had all I had the patches. The, uh, I had the Korean flag on mine, not the... Uh... No, I had the Korean flag. I have the Greek flag. I have mm-hmm. the uh, WTF. I have the uh, Taekwondo Federation one. Very. I'm like a Joe Rogan. I'm going to start kicking things like Joe Rogan. Oh, memories. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm gonna give them a little uh, karate lesson like Effie used to give us. Oh, very cool. A stick. Rich and I went to a fanatical Taekwondo school where this older Greek lady used to beat us with like a piece of tree that she would like cut off a tree and she's just beat true. the shit out of everybody. All the kids we, we were, I, I cannot believe it that was, that's a real thing. It was a good experience. It's a, it was a fantastic experience. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Rich, anything you want to add? No, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, please. Subscribe to us on YouTube. We're trying to get this follower count up. We're almost at 6,000. We want to hit 60,000. Uh, we want to be able to do this more for you. Sign up to Patreon, patreon.com slash Podcast, And uh, we're going to try to produce more content during the new year. Um, yeah, guys. Check it out. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. That's it for this week. See you all later. Bye-bye for now.